Hey you doing everybody, greetings and welcome to another episode of 8 Bits in the Basement. So what we're going to be looking at today is an Atari 2600 clone. Now this is a system, or one of many systems, that was made in Hong Kong back in the late 80s and early 90s. And it's modelled, this particular one, is modelled on the Atari 2600 Dark Vader version, so the black one with four switches. But the difference with this system, although it'll run regular Atari games and cartridges and all that, is that apparently it has 160 games built into it that we can select and play without any cartridges at all. So that's why it kind of appealed to me and that's why I figured I'd pick it up. And the other thing with it is it's actually missing one part, which apparently makes it unusable. So we'll have a look, see what it does, if it works at all. And we'll see if it needs repair, and if it does, if we can repair it. So let's crack it open and see exactly what it is. Now, so I'm after removing the 2600 from its box, quite obviously. And what it came with was this here, Miss Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. So I've got a new cartridge on top of everything else as well. So that's nice. We'll try it, this system, with that maybe. So anyway, this system looks very, very much... And it's actually kind of indistinguishable from the real Darth Vader that Atari themselves made. With the exception of it doesn't actually have the uh, Atari 2600 badge or label down here. And another difference is that it's got this 160 games built in on each side. And there's one other more subtle difference. Normally you've got a black and white and color switch here. But what we have is game search off and on. I get to that in a minute. And um, back here we've got our left controller and our right controller, and we've got our difficulty switches as well for um, player one and player two, the same as on a regular Atari, and also the little power jack here that takes our three and a half millimeter uh, headphone jack with nine volts um, power coming in. And over here, now this is what the vendor said is the reason that it's not working. There should be a three position switch back here where usually you would have your channel two to three to select for um, the signal on an NTSC version of the Atari 2600. And what that does is there's a ROM inside in this system with 160 games on it and it'll switch between three different blocks of that ROM so that we can select different games. We'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Uh, the other thing is it's just got this regular RF cable coming out of the back of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into the TV and I will put, for the moment, we'll stick Miss Pac-Man into it. We'll power it on and we'll see if we can tune our TV into it and see if we can get at least that much of it working. And then we'll take a look and see about this game search thing and if we really do need the switch or not. So let's just try it like that. We won't open it up or anything just yet. Just plug it in and see does it work. Now. So I've got my Atari clone system here set up to my TV. All I'm after doing is plugging that RF lead that's coming out of the back of it into the back of the TV here and set onto TV tuner. And I've made sure that I'm in PAL mode and I'm set to kind of region of Western Europe because this is supposed to be a PAL system. So that's that much of it set up to the TV. Now to power this system, I've got my nine volt DC one amp little uh, power pack here for my Atari 2600 and you'll see that it's connected up to a three and a half millimeter audio jack so the tip of it here is positive and all the rest of it is negative that's pretty much the way it's wired up so I'll plug this into the back here and we'll just power on to see now it doesn't seem to be a whole lot happening although there is ah there is so that's a good sign it looks like it looks like the Atari is spitting out some kind of a signal well at times anyway so what we'll do is we'll plug the Miss Pac-Man cartridge into it. We will power it on and we'll see if we can tune it in. Okay, there we are, that's that powered on. And to tune this guy in, auto search. And there we go. So we'll leave that do its little tune in there. It's going to take, I don't know, it takes about five minutes to tune in. So we'll come back and see if it's found anything at all okay so my auto search is done and this is what I have on the screen doesn't look all that promising does it okay so maybe maybe the cartridge may be faulty ah oh, hang on oh 
Okay, well, this looks promising enough. This here, what it reminds me of, or what it looks like, is times before when I was making my own cartridges and whatnot, if I had programmed them wrong, this is what I get on screen. Or, of course, if there was a bad contact on a cartridge, this is what you get on screen. So it's possible there may be a problem with the, um, with the cartridge port in this, which isn't, like, impossible so i think what we'll do is we will power it off i'll remove this cartridge and we'll put it on without a cartridge inside to see if the um if the inbuilt games work or not no they don't seem to either <laughs> ah there we go hang on oh, what have we got going here is this ah there's a loose there's a bad connection on the power coming in at the back. Hang on. Yeah, we've got a bad connection on the power coming in at the back. But that guy seems to be cycling through games a bit, although it's a bit. Yeah, okay. This is, <laughs> this is a strange little one. But um, the system seems to be working anyway to a point. You know, we'll try with that cartridge plugged in there and see. Okay, I'll tell you, this seems to be flexing an awful lot when I plug in that. But no, I'm, I'm not getting anything apart from those wavy lines and stuff. Yeah, so... Yeah, I don't like the way that board is flexing either. The whole thing seems to be... seems to be fairly... Hmm, it doesn't seem to be kept in very well, you know? So, yeah, I think that... Oh, let's play music. <laughs> So I think the next thing to do, what we'll do is, we'll open this guy up, we'll have a look on the inside at the solder connection, solder joints and all that, see if it's missing screws, see if it's probably been open before, you know, and if there's anything obvious, we'll try and repair it, and see if we can get it tuned in a little bit better. So that is the next step for right now. Now, so it's time to open up this little system and see what's going on on the inside of her that's causing all that hassle. So I tried it actually with another cartridge and it didn't work either. And I tried spraying some contact cleaner in there to see if it was just a contact problem. And that didn't make any difference either. So I'm pretty sure, judging by the way that board is flexing, that there's just something major wrong on the inside. So what we're going to do is remove these four screws, the two here and the two diagonal ones in here. And I'll be honest, I don't think this has been opened before because that screw cracked when I turned it and that usually only happens if the system has never been opened. So, Alright, well, let's four of those screws removed. Four of them are all exactly the same size. My screwdriver rolling back onto the table, you go over there. Now, so this guy should remove up like this. Should be able to pull that off mm. there we go we will have a look at this board so we've got ah oh, we've got an RF connector just coming in there okay so we can take that part out of the way for now anyway yeah there you go this is our board <laughs> as it stands we have here a 7805 uh, that there is the voltage regulator. We've got a nice, a nice little 1000 nanofarad capacitor here. And then, like I said before, we've got a couple of logic chips. And we have a chip here, which I assume has the ROM. And this here must be a Atari on a chip or something, because it's the only chip there is. I mean, usually you've got a Riot, you've got a TIA, and you've got a processor. But here we've got logic, we've got some type of ROM, because it has to store its game somewhere. And then we've got this guy here, which must be an Atari on a chip. Now, I saw a Ben Heck video years and years ago where he, um, he built a little handheld Atari using one chip, which was an Atari on a chip thing. And I'm wondering if maybe this is something like that. I don't know. Anyway, that is pretty much it. This here is our RF tuner box. This is our RF out. Uh, this must be some kind of a little pot or something to adjust colors and stuff. But otherwise, it's, yeah, chip that seems to control absolutely everything. 
a ROM that has a few games on it, a couple of logic chips here, I suppose to control um, the switch in between uh, titles on ROM here between the banks. And yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it in a very flexible board. So I think what we will do <clears throat> when I put this back in, you see, usually that sits in there and you've got the screws, the diagonal ones that came through will be going through to here. Well, they'll be going through here and screwing into the top plastics. But this guy is still flexing like mad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of plastic or a piece of wood or something that I can put at the back here so that when uh, you plug cartridges in and out of it, it doesn't flex. You know, there's something there's something stopping it from flexing because it's just going to any any repairs that I do to it. If I do get it working properly again, it's going to um it's going to it's going to cause hassle all over again so what we'll do is we will warm up little soldering iron and we'll get reflown some of those and see what happens all right time after getting all of my soldering equipment together here i got my soldering iron heated up i've got a little bit of a little bit of solder and a little bit of solder paste or flux so that's all i need or that's all i should need to try and repair whatever the heck is going on with this so as you'll remember there are three real problems with this board We've got power that isn't really working right, unless you fool around with it. We've got a cartridge slot that isn't working at all. And we've also got a TV tuner that seems to be tuned in kind of not great. It's a snowy type picture, anything that we get on screen. And when I had a little look at the back of the board here, I found one dry joint for each and every one of those problems. So I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit here and focus this guy. And you'll see right here, there is a dry dry joint right there. You can see that it's um it's broken. The solder is broken. And that's the reason why that guy is making intermittent contact. So we'll reflow that. That should fix it. And I found another one right here on this here is the connector for the cartridge port. If I can get it to zoom in there properly. And you'll see that I think it's right here. We've got the same type thing going on. This little pin uh is kind of not touching solder at all so it's not making contact with that trace there that's going to wherever it's going which is most likely the reason why any cartridge we plug into this isn't working right and the third dry joint i found or a third potential problem is over here uh, this guy right here has a look of a not properly soldered or kind of dry joint as well and this guy is part of the rf setup so um yeah we've got a dry joint for pretty much <laughs> each of the problems that are on this board so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reflow those three points there we go that should do that one and the next one this guy right here i can feel that pin moving so that is a definite problem There we go. That's that guy re-soldered. So that should have fixed that, I hope. And finally, this guy over here. No. Okay, so here we are back set up again. We're after doing all our soldering. We're after fixing the dry joints that we found, all three of them. So what we'll do is we'll plug in once more and we will power on. And there we go. We got an image on screen. It looks to be a lot clearer than it was anyway. And I can pretty much swing out of this thing. And it's not doing any harm. It's not stopping the, uh, the power from coming in. So it seems that we've repaired that little problem. Um, okay, the RF thingy seems to be an awful lot better too. There still are a few little dots around the screen, but it seems to be a lot better. Uh, I might try tuning it in again in a moment. But uh, the other thing, the big one, 
is to see if Miss Pac-Man will work or not in it. So I'm going to shove in the cartridge here with power on. <laughs> there we go. Look, this is brilliant. It was down to three little dry joints that were causing all the woes on this system. We've got, um, we've got cartridges seem to be working now properly and um, the power is working, right? So I think the next thing we'll do is we'll plug in a joystick and see if the system is actually working because we haven't played anything on it just yet. So I will plug a joystick into this port here. There we go. Now, and we power on and Okay, no, we've got nothing happening there. Maybe it's the other joy port. Hang on, plug out. Plug into this one. I just got killed. Okay. Ah, there we go. That's the fella. Okay, so this seems this seems quite good now. I don't think I can test out the fire button on this one, but up, down, left, and right on the joystick are working away fine. And uh, yeah, the system seems to be working fairly good. So it didn't take a whole lot to get it up to this point. So I think the next thing we'll do is I'm going to um, check it out. Actually, we'll check and see what way it's working without a cartridge as well now that we're at it. Okay, we'll try this game, eh? Let's try this one. Is there anything I can do here? Here we are. Okay, I'm not sure what story with this game is. Okay, I press the button and I push forward, makes me speed up. And I'm not supposed to crash into the other ones. There's some kind of motorcycle thing. I don't know what the hell it is. If I flick the game select one, it'll cycle through the games that are on the cartridge up until I find one I want to play. And then I stop it and I should be able to play whichever game comes up. Now, I'm not sure what story is with this. What's the, is this like Food Fight or something, is it? Oh no, I'm trying to fight. I don't know what the heck this game is. Okay, on to the, ah, there we go. Let's try that one. Ah, we can test the fur button out on this one. So excellent. This is, what is this? Demon attack. Excellent little game. Ah, yeah, we're enjoying this fella. <laughs> there we go. Okay, this system seems to be working quite well as regards joystick in that port at least. So the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in multi, multi cart with space war see that both joy ports are working and then we'll try it with a set of paddles and see that everything is working and uh, if everything is okay we'll clean it up put it all back together and that's it job done we've got another atari unit for the basement be it a clone and all the rest but it's uh, it's a nice little one with some little set of games so uh, yeah we'll try out those other tests now Okay, so what I'm after doing is, I'm after putting in my little multi-cart that I made up ages ago. It's got Space War on it and another few games that we can test stuff out with. And I'm after plugging in a joystick into each joy port, just so we can easily check that all the directions and fire are working on both joy ports. So I'll turn on here, and if it works, which it's not, it's not working. Hang on a sec. There we go. I don't know what was going on there. Anyway, what we've got going here is we have Space War. So I can select a two player game on that. And when we start, I can test my left and right here using this guy. Fire button is working on this joystick. Forward will make him go forward and backwards will make him disappear and then reappear again. So all of the four directions and the fire button are working on this particular joystick. On the second joystick here should control this ship. Forward makes him go forward, so that's good. Our fire button is working. Left is working, right is working, and when I push back he disappears. And he reappears. So we've got both joysticks working the way they should on this particular unit. So what I want to do now is I'm going to remove this cartridge and I'm going to stick in Circus Atari, which is a game that uses paddles. So we will check and see if paddles are working correctly with this system now. Um, yeah. So where am I? Plug out these two joysticks. And I'll plug my set of paddles in. Here we are. I'll plug these guys in here. And see uh, if they'll stay in. See if this works or not. 
Okay, let's see if we're in the wrong joy port, either that or it's not working with paddles, one or the other. Okay, there you go. So, okay, that one doesn't do anything. Ah, uh, guys, we got a system that for some reason doesn't work with paddles. <laughs> this particular system doesn't seem to work. Or maybe, hang on, maybe I'm jumping the gun here. Maybe I need to have a game started. Plug in there. No. This game, this particular system doesn't work with paddles. So I don't know what's going on there, but um, it seems that this is, is a thing. Either there's a fault with this system some way, I don't know. Or maybe there's maybe there's another joint that needs to be reflowed or something. I'll have a look, see, but uh, I suppose maybe it makes sense in a way. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem to work with paddles, though. So I'll check that out and see what story is with it. Okay, so here we are. I'm sitting in front of my little clone Atari VCS system and it all put back together. All after being cleaned up, all after being sorted back up. Although there's one little thing that I did do. Now, you'll remember that the problems we had on this were caused by dry joints. And the reason that we ended up with dry joints was that the motherboard inside this thing was flexing mad. Every time you put in a cartridge, especially, or pulled it out, the thing was like warping. And that's what broke solder joints. That's what meant that power wasn't working, right? It's also what meant that cartridge port wasn't working anymore. And um, and we were also having a few problems with the RF side of things. So a simple little reflow of solder and all that's working away perfectly. But in order to try and prevent that from happening again, what I did was I took a little piece of wood and I jammed it down between the two plastic standoffs that the motherboard sits on. And what that's doing is it's supporting the motherboard. So now it doesn't move no matter what I do, which is great. So I can shove in cartridges, take them out, thing works away great. Now this guy is based, as we saw, on the 6591 Atari on a chip. So what they've done is they've consolidated three chips into one because the original Atari VCS used the TIA chip for, for sound and for an image on the screen. It also had a RIA chip for its input and output. And then it had its processor, 6507 as far as I remember, uh, which was the brains of the system. But this 6591 is after consolidating all three of those chips into one. So what we end up with is, yeah, really a clone system kind of just thrown together that way. Now, one of the drawbacks of that, you remember we tried the paddles on this and they didn't work. I wasn't sure if it was again another solder joint problem, but as it turns out, it seems it's not because I've checked and on the controller, uh, on the controller plugs themselves, Pin 5 and pin 9 are used to uh, read the paddles. And those aren't actually connected to anything on the board. So it can't work with paddles at all. It just can't. And as further proof positive of that, I found built in on this system Circus Atari. Remember I tried it with the paddles on the multi-cart I had? Well, it's been adapted to work with a joystick on this system. So. I think that's further proof positive that this will only work with the joystick and nothing more. So um, that's pretty much this system. So am I happy with it? Well, yeah, I am. I'm delighted that it actually works. And one other thing about this is that what I like about it is you can turn it on with a too much setup and go through a, a whole host of games and check them out. And I pretty much kind of burnt three hours this afternoon. I sat down at three o'clock and turned it on once I had put it all back together to test it was working fairly okay and well guess what I kind of went through each game and here I am three hours later and I thought only half hour had passed but no so I had I had great fun with the system this afternoon but um it says it's got 160 games built in that's not really true but I can't complain too much I mean there's 130 games in so who's going to fall out over 30 games but uh yeah that's pretty much this system would I recommend it if you don't have an Atari by all means, yeah, you should pick up one of these if you can find them cheap enough. They're going for stupid prices, it seems, at the moment. I um, I didn't even know these existed, and I came across this. I think it was €29 Euro I paid for it. And, uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't know they existed. I actually thought it was Atari themselves that had built this, but no, it's a Chinese knockoff. 
<laughs> there, there you go. But it is a fun system. So anyway, that is today's video for you. We'll finish up with a Star Wars joke. So there was Luke and Vader, and they're, they're speaking together. And Vader says, Luke, I know what Obi-Wan got me for Christmas. And Luke says, no, that's not true. That's impossible. And Vader says, I have felt his presence. See? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so look, like, subscribe, all that lovely stuff. We'll talk to you again soon, I hope at least. Until then, bye-bye.